let's talk about Melbourne. It's not one story. It's many stories. It's your stories. We left our countries. Why? We are here now. Why? We really wanted something. What? Do you understand me? <laughs> What excited me to do this project is that international students are an incredible cohort of young people with bright minds from diverse cultures that come and live in this city. In what way do they enrich our identity? What do we learn from each other? I mean, that's why I do this work, so we can figure out what we don't know. <sighs> Breathe out from your belly. very, very, very shy. When I started these uh, acts of translation, I thought it would be just a workshop for people who was struggling with the English. I come to the workshop because Lin, <laughs> Lin introduced me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because my um, usual life is so boring. The food was part of the reason I stayed, I won't lie. <laughs> but after the food came the people. Very important is building that fun, dynamic workshop of connection and conversation and building the trust. Without the trust, I've got nothing. So that's a process that happens through the body, that happens through play and happens through storytelling. I got there and they were doing weird stuff. They were yelling. In the beginning, uh, it was like big awkward men uh, like doing the weird exercises. But then I understood, like, through those weird exercises, you can easily connect with the others. <laughs> I was like, okay, so that's a drama class. That's not translation at all. But then I understood it's not the translation of language. It's the translation of culture. The intention of this work is to build your confidence. So it's not about, I'm not being some, I'll be bossy, but I'm on your side. The work is ultimately about transformation. You start in one place in a journey and you end up somewhere else. You so wish you could talk oh, with locals, but you don't know what to say. Oh. You've all told me that a hundred million times that that's a big issue. Yeah. Now is the opportunity, yeah. okay? Yeah. <laughs> Students want to step out of their culture. They didn't leave their country, their family, to come and get that exact same experience and to close themselves up into their cultural groups. It wasn't the dream they had. In the first year of my study, I only mingle with the Chinese students and I try to make friends with the uh, local people, but I don't know how. Do you think I'm a typical Chinese speaking only with the Chinese, hang out only with Chinese, and that I don't talk to you? We are forced to be silent sometimes, and why we are silent, it can be explained by the whole play. <laughs> Sound elective, not accounting, not business. That makes me to be with the locals. What's that? Applied human rights of indigenous people. Because of the fear of failing exams or something like that back in China. That's why most Chinese students do say that they prefer to choose business subjects. We will threaten that we have to get great marks. So that's why we want to choose something that we're good at. We don't want to risk. Be a good daughter must be a good girl. Follow the routine. 你好! When I'm expressing in English, my uh, thoughts are very superficial one. It's tangible one. But when I'm expressing the intangible concept, I, I'm not capable of that. For the study here, I think it's more about thinking, much more than you just memorize all of the stuff. I always lag behind because not only the English is a big problem, the whole context. About structural racism? Mm. Pardon? 
Can you say that again? Structure. Racism. I know structure. I know racism. But when they are put together... Actually, I'm, I'm still not confident with my English. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah, every time I, when I speak something, I will review, like, to revise in my mind, oh, is the tense right? Or is the correct words? <laughs> yes, everybody has their own language, but English is important. Why? Because everyone speaks English. Why everyone speaks English? Because the English are everywhere! Well, the English are everywhere! Oh, the English are everywhere! Because they have boats! If I lower the pace of all my classmates, their benefits will be affected. So I think I should be the one to work harder. I just put more time than I have imagined. I think it's my own problem. From Monday to Friday, uh, I catch a train from Novavak to city. It's a collective story. So whilst it might be this person's individual monologue, how does it relate to you? That helps us to think beyond the immediate response to people of other cultures. It's also about racism. What the fuck, you Asian? Why are you Asian? Come here. You take a lot of benefit. You take a lot of money. You make me become homeless. What the fuck, you Asians? Most of OC don't think like us. Oh, do you? Do you think Australia is a racist country? Yes, your thumbs. <laughs> What uh, the term Australians use to call anyone from Greece, Italy, Malta, anyone from Europe. Now we can laugh about it, but back then you could get bashed up and beat off. I'm the Aussie in the production. I just I love learning about all the different cultures and, you know, the challenges that they face in their daily lives. Chinese, Chinese, Indonesia, and Indian, Vietnam, like me. They talk to each other, but not in English. I don't want to be rude. But where are the locals? You see them around, you know, you're polite and stuff and you're friendly, but there's no real... Connection, yeah. because they're not part of our course, so like, there's no contact yeah. at all. It's very, very hard to meet locals here, super hard. As I imagine, like, you had your high school here, you already have your group of friends, so you don't want to meet other people. Try asking your international students about their lives, but not just the good things yourself. How are you? What do you study? Try like really knowing them. I don't think I could do what they have done, like to move country. I feel nervous because I spent a lot of money to come here. Is that Australia? Most of my friends are from Brazil, but I'm trying to, to change this. Brazilians. Not all of us, of course, you can generalize, but we are very warm people. We love people, we love hugs. When we meet you, we try to kiss you on the cheek, and that's weird. <laughs> the Act of troll Asian changed my stereotypes. Asian people, for me, were like very cold, and not too close, and not too open to other cultures, but when I met the people in this group, they are different, you know. You have to have the chance to meet people in a deeply way, to before judge. Yeah, we're gonna buy some salmon. In Chinese culture, we found that when we say thank you to your close one, it means you show a distance to them. So that's why we don't say thank you. When we don't say thank you, it means that we are close friends. We have a specific word. It's called ke tao. We don't, we don't do this. It's too unfriend. We do have a word to describe this awkwardness, but you don't, you guys do, do not have. So this is really interesting that when you learn a, a, a language, you also need to learn the culture as well. Some people usually label international student as like one entity. Everybody, including international student, have different uniqueness. You don't need to hug anybody, but just say hi to us. Because, yes, we are, we are different, Yet, we are the same, we are human beings. Congratulations! You got an offer to study in Australia! Now I quit the band, now I go to Australia, see if I can survive! Bruno, you must be really, really rich to study in Australia, is that true? 
<laughs> no, I actually got poor to come here because it was a, a very big investment. Now I have no money. So I came here to steal jobs, basically. I'll pay for myself. I work and study, I work and study, I work and study. There's no such a thing as a student visa where you're just studying. You gotta work here. I work it as kitchen hand, dishwasher, and cleaner. I don't understand. Why do you put fuck in the middle of every sentence? <laughs> they say fuck weather, fuck off. What fuck are you doing? What fuck is that? Here I am, in Australia, studying, working, traveling, doing everything. And you can imagine all the jobs that I have done. I don't mind if I need to clean, but back home I was an engineer. I could pay for someone to clean my home, but I never live like this shit and vomit. I know it's hard. This is not our country. But just think about it. A cleaner, a waitress in our countries can have the life that we have here. That's fucking true. <laughs> <laughs> my mom, she doesn't know that. I don't feel confident to tell her the things that I have to do here to get money and to survive. I'm always happy for her. You can't even tell your parents if you are feeling a bit worried or stressed because they will be worried for you. They would know that from my voice, you know. So that's why some of the time I don't even call. Which side? Parent side or friend side? It depends, you know. <laughs> do you? Tell your parents how you feel here, your life in Australia. Do you tell your parents that you love them? Do you tell your parents that you love them? Your fear of failing exams, your study, your boyfriend, girlfriend, relationship. Two years living with um, the local Aussies really changed a lot of perspectives. We share, we share a lot of our emotions. And then I think this is a really great way. You, you know, you connect with your family. In China, we have a line between children and parents. I find it really sweet and also a bit jealous of it. If I say I love you, my mom will say, okay, just tell me what you want. <laughs> my mom will say. We're still mates. We are, we are very close. But you know, for Chinese culture, we don't like have each other so frequently. Yeah, so there. So after the first meeting, Catherine hugged me and I feel so warm and so supported. Oh. It's adventuring into the unknown, the unknown of identity, a new identity. My story uh, is about my coming out to my mom. I thought I would hide myself forever when I was in China, because in Chinese society, people just, they, they can't accept the, the gay issue. You know I'm your mom. No matter what happens, we can all face it together. I'm sorry, Mom. I, I'm not interested in boys. I like girls. Do, do you want to see the doctor? It has been more than one year since I came out to her, and I think my mom has changed a lot because she loves me, so she, she is trying to accept that. She doesn't push me too hard to find a husband or something, but my dad still asks me all the time. <laughs> Australia is a country that I feel free here. I can be who I am, and I can live the life I want. It's enough for a girl to have a bachelor degree. You made the wrong choice sending her to Australia. You still got her married as soon as possible. It's a waste of money. My mom already ta <laughs> kept texting me that, do you have a boyfriend yet? We have a phrase called Mendang Hu Dui. It means we're going to be matched finance aspects, social aspects, parents aspects. I need to study hard to prove my mom was right, my marriage was wrong. I'm not a waste of money. It's warm. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Oh, yes, I'm weeping. <laughs> Mother has always arranged for a prospective bride who just pops in. 
slowly and slowly i realized that this is the place which gave me a very safe secured comfortable environment to be what i am i had a very good job in india and a very loving family <clears throat> why did i move here sometimes i feel i should just say it just say it it helped me to open up to you know come out to blossom my individuality to felt accepted putting yourself in an entirely new situation you know that opens up your perspective towards the world and maybe widens it or maybe changes it completely it's greatly rewarding the question is don't you have a university in your country oh <laughs> the thing is we do have universities at our country but it's really competitive to get in So there's a huge hype in India about uh, getting into the most prestigious universities, uh, the IITs. I started coaching from year 11, but these days people do study from year 9. How should I get it? So obvious, Kerala, Kali, internet, 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 and Facebook. Then it's another matter. Like this, yeah. Tare Kali, pure to study, study, and study. Karwan hoy. About 1.2 million students sit for it every year, and out of those, just 12,000 get to study in the IITs. My father would come and say, "Josh, come on, go to sleep. You studied enough." There's a lot of pressure on the kid, but I guess that's pretty universal, isn't it? Oh, the teacher is going to ask a question. Please, mommy. Please, mommy. We spend one month on here. I can't understand what they say. I was all the time in my own city, which is Lahore. So. When I came here, it's totally new experience for me, and it's like you know, uh, a new world for me. Paji, मुन्ने समझ नहीं आती थी की पढ़ाने देने, सब कुछ बड़ा मुश्किल है, मुन्ने बिल्कुल समझ नहीं आती, तो अन्य मेरी हेल्प करनी पड़ेगी. Because in our culture, from childhood to until you get married, everything is done from your sisters uh, and mothers and brothers. They everyone help you, but here you are on your own in everything. I'm trying to study. I'm hungry. I'm alone. I'm in Melbourne. I miss that. Confucius said, "If your parents are alive, don't go too far away from her home." Am I selfish? How many times will I see them again? If you do decide to go, let them know where you are. I've got this social efforts. I decided to. It's kind of um, a personal project because uh, you know, as international students, if you don't really make an effort and reach out. You can't end up feeling isolated and lonely because we don't have our families and friends here. I try to come here once in a week, every Saturday or Sunday. This is my mushroom guy. Every time I get a chance, I, no matter they are men or women, young or old, I will initiate the conversation and just ask them questions and um, you know have some small talks. Every time I do that, after I come back, I I would draw a line. Uh, so as you can see, in May I had 22 social efforts. By looking at these calendars, I know that, like in this month, I focused on socializing. Maybe in another month, I focused on preparing for my English test, and then another month I didn't do much because I was mainly in the library. I only got maybe two or three social efforts. Yes. So this is my assignment calendar. I don't want to. Live a life like this anymore? Too boring. Yeah. Too intense. Hi. Good. Thanks. Yourself? <laughs> oh me? I'm from Iraq. I study here. Uh, I'm doing interpreting and translation in Aramaiti. Probably my coordinator is here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Living in Melbourne is totally different experience for me. I don't have to be worried about my religious background, my nationality, like uh, originally where I am from, if I am covered or not. So I just feel like I'm a human, I'm free, I'm protected. That's the most important thing for me. I was doing volunteer work, interpreting for Syrian refugees. It helps all of us as a human to know more about each other by listening to each other's stories. Theatre is a visceral art form and when, when the students connect to their stories, which is my job, to get people connected to their own stories, connected to each other, then connected to the wider community, when you do that, it works. If I want to connect to locals, I have to learn how to use Facebook and Messenger. Oh, you're gonna go to the park, you wanna come? Yeah, sure, no worries, good day! Hey! With all this, I had to train myself to drink. <laughs> I don't drink! When we start to share our personal stories, that's when our friendship gets deeper. The participants, the students, don't recognise the power of what they've done until they've performed. She'll be right! She'll, She'll be right! right. <laughs> and particularly this kind of work, because it's, it's you. You're putting yourself out there, you're telling your story, it's your personal narrative, and you're exposing your vulnerabilities, your strengths. Students don't realise the power of that until they're witnessed in performance. And when they're witnessed in performance, then it's like, aha. For me, what makes me feel confident is like you are enjoying it. And yeah. this is true. This, we are not lying, we are not acting. They are, these are our lives, but it's, you know, it's like challenging. Challenging thinking in English and they're in your language and they're acting <laughs> and then they're and, they're, and all of us. So I feel very, very proud. Well, that was, fucking amazing. <laughs> the miracle of story is this. You can only tell one story, your own story. The other side of it is that when we share our stories, they are also like mirrors. It's the most amazing way to overcome prejudice. What does prejudice mean? English lesson? <laughs> it just means prejudge. The spelling myths, you're overcoming prejudice, and this show should be seen far and wide. I'm a very boring person. Sometimes I think myself like that. I don't have much passion in my life. In the past, if you ask me, can you perform? And I would say, no, what's that? <laughs> it gave me a lot of confidence, not only in the project, but also in my life. I didn't feel like the funny guy or the black guy. I just felt like one of the guys. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's all I ever wanted. We have a lot of connection between the local and the student. I miss a lot of friends, they encourage me. It's amazing in my life. I think this is the, the best memory in Melbourne. It's more personal to me since doing the project. Like, I'm just like really proud to just be a part of something like this, to get rid of that ignorance. Sometimes I think I fall into the trap of you know, seeing overseas students and you know, as groups rather than individuals. They all opened my opened my perception and made me think. I will think differently now. And just feel through the hands without trying too hard the connection between us all and what we've created together. The workshops that we had, they were amazing. They made us connect with everybody else. And obviously it grew deeper day after day. There is a reason for me to, to be in Melbourne and the reason is to find myself, to connect to my true um, me. Why shouldn't storytelling be a major action? It should be a major action. It helps, it works. That's why we do this, if we care about people if we care about the community that we live in, if we want a more peaceful world, if we want a world of understanding, then that's why this work 
is such an intervention.